with the NRA, National Rifle Association, and I'm just here to look at the museum they have. That's where we are, the NRA Museum. Good afternoon, and welcome to the NRA Museum here in Fairfax, Virginia. Today, we will explore the history of firearms and the history of firearms, which I just said twice. I don't know why. Anyway, let's go and check out all the great guns. All right, what you see? historical firearms here. These are the personal firearms of Robert E. Peterson. It's a 1911. So you got a slide for a 45 and then if you want to switch it to a 22, you got a different slide. We just started, so we're up in the uh, historical section. Oh, look, the Gatling gun. Okay, I have to donate something because places like this are important and they have to be kept open. Places that show our history. And they're important. That's important. Check out the Gatlin gun, man. That's the precursor to today's uh, miniguns. These were all the, like hand crank. You crank them and then the wheel turns and then uh, you know, bullets come out, but today's miniguns are battery powered, of course. But uh, it's the same principle, pretty much. So, very little has changed in a hundred years. As I was saying, this is the Charlton Heston Gallery. Charlton Heston was a great Hollywood actor. He was also president of the NRA for a long time. This must have been his personal
There's a 10 millimeter 1911 Smith and Wesson. That's a 38 caliber revolver of Officer Walter Edward Edward Weaver of the NYPD who died on 9/11. And here is a whole wall of 1911. firearms are. There's the Baron 50 Cal used in the Hurt Locker movie. There's the Garand, M1 Garand used by Clint Eastwood in Grand Torino. Over here we have the Gatling gun used in uh, Beretta 9 and 2, used by Mel Gibson, a lethal weapon. <laughs> it's one of the first firearms I fired. Here's Bruce Willis holding it. Not, uh, not much trigger discipline, but you know, that's Hollywood for you. And here's the blaster from Star Wars. Here's the machete that uh, Billy used in Predator. Here's Eddie Murphy's gun in Beverly Hills Cop. Kind of got in there. Lots of browning. Here's a Glock used by uh, Mel Gibson in Edge of Darkness. Here's the Kimber used in SWAT. Special LAPD SWAT Kimber with that with a tack light. There's another Beretta 92 here, but this is uh, silver. There's another Beretta 92. Hmm. The war dogs. Here you go. That was the guns used by Mr. Pink and Mr. Black. Now, now we're talking. Of American weapons. 
that trip down M4. I had everything I had. Light, ACOG scope, everything you need. Here's an old M16, Vietnam era. Nice, huh? Like it. It's an AR, 16H2. Here's an M14. That's like a ramp over there. Some weapons used in Desert Storm. Another M4. Sniper rifle. An AK. Here's, a, here's an AUG. Here's a Baron. 50 caliber. Or at a 92. The uh, standard firearm of the US Armed Forces. Some more M14s, 16, another M14, Let's see here, more sniper rifles, this is from the Korean War, here's a World War II scene. Some burnt out European place. Looks like the GIs found the cache of German. All sorts of European weapons there. This guy has a this guy has a Garand. That's a uh, MG42. And you have a Thompson over there. I guess it belongs to this guy. Thompsons were only issued to officers and NCOs, so that guy, that guy's got to be an officer. This guy's got a, uh, uh, I'd like to say a Schmeiser, but it's not really a Schmeiser. He's saying, hey, check out this German weapon. This guy's saying, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. My Garand is better. Potato mask, German grenade. Thompson, one of the most famous machine guns in the world, chambered for 45 caliber. There's a bunch of Garands down here. There's another Thompson down here. Look at Thompson. Tommy gun. I haven't seen yet. I haven't seen the BAR yet. Where the BAR? Let me go look for the BAR and then, then that's it. See if there would be a BAR. It would be here in the World War II exhibit. But, but uh, none of these guys have a BAR. Look. See? I'll keep looking. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the BAR. The legendary BAR, Browning Automatic Rifle. Look at that. Chambered for 30 caliber, was used uh, in World War II and also uh, in the FBI against uh, the gangs. BAR, baby. There's an M1 carbine. What's this chamber for? Uh, not sure. The great guns from World War II. 
So we got a uh, Springfield, we got the uh, Springfield bolt action rifle. There's an M1 carbine with a retractable uh, stock. There's another bolt action Springfield. Shotgun. Of course, out here the BAR. Here's a Thompson. Some more M1 carbines. Here are the guns used by the British. Right, uh, can't seem to find my way out. I follow the exit signs, but it only leads me to more exit signs. <laughs> Hang on a second. I guess we'll just go out the same way we came in. So, that is the uh, Firearms Museum. Now we will visit the store. They're open. Oh yes, NRA store. Isn't that cool? I think I'll buy this. It's a barbecue lighter, but I think I'll just put it on display. A tiny M4. Okay, that was our visit to the NRA Museum. A very, a very nice visit. Very informative and historic. Now, I find my way back to my car and uh, I think I'll have some lunch. It's about two o'clock and I haven't had lunch yet. But, uh, really not that hungry yet. I'm just kind of too excited to be at the NRA here. We'll go have